Chinese startup founded by a former Google engineer claims to have developed its own TPU chip for AI, a custom ASIC reportedly 1.5 times faster than NVIDIA's A100 GPU from 2020 and up to 75% more efficient, built on an older but easier to source manufacturing process, which roughly implies around 40% better performance per watt. At first glance, that sounds like a narrow comparison to an aging GPU. But when you look at how this chip is built, why it was designed this way, and where it fits into the long-term direction of AI hardware, it becomes clear that Ghana is not meant to win today's benchmarks. It is positioned to become a structural threat over time. The company behind the chip is Zhonghao Xinying, a Chinese AI semiconductor startup based in Hangzhou. Its flagship processor, Ghana, belongs to a platform the company calls a General Purpose Tensor Processing Unit, or GPTPU. Despite the name, this chip is not trying to compete with GPUs on flexibility. It is competing on something far more important for the future of AI, efficiency, specialization, and control. Zhonghao Xinying was founded by Yangong Yifan, an engineer who previously worked at Google, where he contributed directly to multiple generations of Google's tensor processing units, the same chips Google uses internally to train and serve massive AI models at global scale. His co-founder, Zheng Hanshun, also brings deep industry experience, having worked at Oracle and Samsung Electronics Semiconductor research and development operations in the United States. This is not a team experimenting on the fringes. These are engineers who have already seen how AI infrastructure evolves at scale and where its real weaknesses lie. To understand Ghana technically, you need to understand the nature of modern AI workloads, large language models, vision models, and recommendation systems rely overwhelmingly on dense matrix multiplication and tensor accumulation. Attention layers, feed forward blocks, projections, embeddings, almost everything reduces to the same mathematical operations repeated trillions of times. GPUs handle this through programmable cores that decode instructions, schedule threads dynamically, and support many unrelated workloads. That flexibility is powerful, but it comes with overhead. Ghana removes most of that overhead. Instead of programmable streaming multiprocessors like NVIDIA GPUs, Ghana uses fixed function tensor engines, likely arranged in large systolic or semi-systolic arrays. In this design, data flows through the chip in a predictable pattern, and computation happens continuously as values move between processing elements. There is minimal instruction decoding, minimal runtime scheduling, and virtually no logic dedicated to graphics or non-AI tasks. When Ghana is running an AI workload, most of its transistors are doing useful work nearly all the time. This architectural focus explains why Ghana can plausibly claim 1.5 times effective performance over NVIDIA's A100, even though it is built on an older manufacturing process widely believed to be around 12 nanometers. On paper, that process node is several generations behind NVIDIA's Hopper and Blackwell GPUs. Normally, that would be a fatal disadvantage, but performance is not just about transistor count, it is about utilization. By stripping away flexibility and committing fully to tensor math, Ghana extracts far more useful AI work per transistor than a general purpose GPU. Precision support reinforces this specialization. Ghana focuses on FP16 and BF16, which dominate modern AI training and inference. It does not waste silicon on FP64, which is critical for scientific simulations, but largely irrelevant for neural networks. NVIDIA GPUs must support FP64 because they serve many markets. Ghana does not. That single decision frees up silicon area, reduces power consumption, and allows more space for tensor engines. Memory design further amplifies this advantage. NVIDIA's A100 relies on high bandwidth memory, delivering enormous bandwidth, but at the cost of power, packaging complexity, and dependence on advanced supply chains. 
Ghana likely uses a simpler external memory system paired with large on-chip SRAM buffers. Instead of brute-forcing bandwidth, it relies on data locality and reuse. Transformer models reuse weights and activations in predictable patterns. By keeping data close to compute units, Ghana reduces off-chip memory traffic, one of the biggest sources of power consumption in AI accelerators. Execution style is another quiet but crucial strength. NVIDIA GPUs schedule thousands of threads dynamically at runtime. Ghana, like Google's TPUs, likely uses a compile-time execution model. The AI graph is analyzed ahead of time by a compiler, which maps operations directly onto the hardware. At runtime, the chip simply executes that plan with minimal control overhead. This approach sacrifices some flexibility, but delivers much higher efficiency and predictability. This is where Ghana's connection to Google TPUs becomes critical. Google's TPUs did not become powerful overnight. Early TPU versions were limited, but Google improved them through compiler iteration and system level optimization. TPU version 2 and version 3 were not the fastest chips on the market, but they were good enough to handle enormous real world workloads efficiently. Ghana sits at a similar point on that evolutionary ladder. Architecturally, it aligns most closely with the TPU version 2 to version 3 era, not with Google's latest TPUs. That does not make it weak. It places it earlier on the same compounding curve. Unlike GPUs, ASICs can gain real-world performance without changing the silicon. Better operator fusion, smarter memory planning, improved scheduling, and optimized communication all raise effective throughput. Each compiler update makes the hardware faster without new fabrication. Google exploited this effect heavily. Ghana is positioned to do the same, especially because Zhonghao Xinying claims full control over its compiler runtime and software stack, developed without reliance on Western intellectual property or licenses. Scaling is handled through a platform called Taize, which Zhonghao Xinying says can connect up to 1,024 Ghana chips into a single cluster. Distributed training depends on fast collective communication for operations like all reduce. NVIDIA uses NVLink and NVSwitch. Google TPUs use a custom mesh interconnect. Ghana's interconnect is likely simpler and lower bandwidth than NVIDIA's or Google's, but this is not a weakness. It is a positioning choice. Ghana targets A, 100 class workloads, not frontier trillion parameter training runs. This is where the NVIDIA comparison becomes strategic rather than superficial. NVIDIA's A100 launched in 2020. Since then, NVIDIA has released Hopper and Blackwell architectures that are vastly more powerful. Ghana is not competitive with H100 or Blackwell in raw performance, and that is true. But access to those chips is not universal. In China, export controls and supply constraints mean many deployments still operate at A, 100 level performance. In that environment, a domestically produced chip that matches or slightly exceeds A100 throughput while consuming less power and avoiding export risk becomes extremely attractive. Energy constraints amplify this effect. Many Chinese data centers are power limited, not hardware limited. Grid capacity and cooling define how much AI compute can actually be deployed. A chip that delivers more performance per watt allows more usable compute within the same energy envelope. Ghana's lower power consumption directly translates into higher deployable capacity. Cost amplifies this effect as well. NVIDIA's latest Blackwell GPUs are reportedly priced between $45,000 and $50,000 per unit. Even older GPUs command high prices due to scarcity. Reports suggest Ghana's cost per unit of compute could be as low as around 40% of comparable NVIDIA solutions. That changes deployment math dramatically. Suddenly, scaling AI infrastructure becomes economically viable again, not just technically possible. 
Ghana does not need to replace NVIDIA everywhere. It only needs to capture workloads where efficiency, availability and sovereignty matter more than raw speed. Now compare Ghana directly to Google's TPUs. Google built TPUs to reduce dependence on NVIDIA inside its own data centers. Over time, TPUs became extremely powerful, but they remain tightly integrated into Google Cloud. Ghana shares the same architectural DNA, fixed function tensor engines, compiler-driven execution, predictable data flow, but it is designed to be deployable outside a hyperscaler's ecosystem. That difference matters. Ghana offers TPU-style efficiency without hyperscaler lock-in. This is what makes Ghana a future threat rather than a current champion. ASICs do not improve through brute force scaling. They improve through iteration. Each compiler update, each interconnect refinement, each memory optimization increases effective performance. The silicon does not need to change for gains to appear. And over multiple generations that compounds. There is also the matter of control. Google's TPUs are tightly coupled to Google Cloud. Amazon's Trainium is tied to AWS. NVIDIA's GPUs are controlled by NVIDIA's ecosystem. Ghana is designed to be owned, deployed, and controlled domestically. Zhonghao Xinying claims full intellectual property independence, no foreign licenses, no Western software dependencies, no external intellectual property blocks. In a world where access to hardware can be restricted overnight, that independence is power. This is why Ghana is not just another chip. It represents a structural alternative. Not faster today, but harder to displace tomorrow. Not as flexible as GPUs, but increasingly sufficient as AI workloads converge on predictable patterns. Not as mature as Google's TPUs, but free from hyperscaler lock-in. From NVIDIA's perspective, Ghana is not an immediate global threat. NVIDIA still dominates the cutting edge, but dominance rarely collapses suddenly. It erodes gradually as alternatives become good enough under real-world constraints. If a meaningful share of AI workloads migrates to specialised ASICs like Ghana, NVIDIA's influence weakens, not because it was out-engineered, but because the rules of the game changed. So what do you think? Is this just another regional chip or the start of a real long-term shift in AI hardware? Share your thoughts below. And if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving tech and AI breakthroughs, make sure to like and subscribe to Evolving AI for daily coverage.